So climate change is happening. You and I are seeing it. We don't really know what's going to happen in a hundred years. We have some guesses, but the thing is, is we need to take action now. And fortunately, we are taking action now. And so this section is just talking about the ways that we, and by we, I really mean you and me, you and me, what we can do to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. You've probably heard of this, of thinking green, thinking about the environment, but that's not the only green. We're thinking about the other green too. We're thinking about that money. All of these different things that I'm gonna talk about are ways that also save you money. So if you don't care about the environment, which hopefully you do, but if you don't, hopefully you care about money in your wallet. And these are ways that help you save money as well. So when looking at carbon dioxide, one of the ways that we can reduce our emissions is through transportation and different types of transportation. So something you need to know, and I would actually give you this on the test, but I'll start it on here anyway, is that for every gallon of gasoline that you burn, 20 pounds of carbon dioxide are released. Now, although carbon dioxide is a gas, it's kind of hard to imagine what a pound of carbon dioxide is. A pound of carbon dioxide is, imagine you have one of those exercise balls, those blue ones that you can do push-ups or, I don't know, the exercise balls. That's about one pound of carbon dioxide. So for every gallon of gasoline you're burning, you're releasing 20 exercise balls filled with carbon dioxide, which is a lot per gallon. So we're going to use this to do a couple of different calculations. So here I have uh, two students who are going to school, just like you guys. And to get to school, they're going to drive a car. So here's their car. They've got a fancy car. They drive to school. And in this example, we're going to say it's 10 miles. So let's, let's do a calculation on a new slide. So from point A to point B, let's say this is 10 miles. And as a reminder, for every one mile, or sorry, for every one gallon, that's going to equal 20 uh, pounds of CO2. So they're driving a car. Now, depending on the car you have is going to matter as to how good of a gas mileage you get and how much carbon dioxide you end up releasing. So let's start with an easy one. Let's say they're driving uh, an SUV, an, uh, an old SUV. And so that SUV gets, so an SUV gets 10 uh, MPG. MPG stands for miles per gallon. So this is saying for every gallon that's used, that gallon is going to take you 10 miles. So here in this problem, we have 10 miles. This is what we're given. In this vehicle, we happen to get 10 miles per gallon. So 10 miles for every one gallon. And all I'm doing is I'm essentially setting up uh, an algebraic equation. So I'm going to multiply the top and divide it by the bottom. So 10 times 1 is 10, and the bottom is also 10, which equals 1. But what are the units? Well, this miles cancels with this miles, so that just leaves gallons. So I have 1 gallon. So although I did all of this math to figure that out, you probably could have done that pretty quickly in your head. If I'm going 10 miles and I get 10 miles to the gallon, that's 1 gallon used. I burned a gallon. And my question, though, is how much carbon dioxide? Well, in this case, that is 20 pounds of CO2. So let's make it a little bit harder. Let's say you've got a nice car uh, or you have a hybrid. I drive a hybrid and I get about 40 miles to the gallon. So I'm driving the same exact distance. I'm going to be driving this uh, 10 miles to school as well. Let's see if I can. Nope. Just want to erase everything on this slide. Mm. Okay, that's okay. Well, we'll, we'll try it this way. So same scenario. I'm going to drive 10 miles. 
and for every one gallon that equals 20 pounds but now my car gets 40 miles to the gallon so I'm going to set up that equation the same exact way I have 10 miles in my car I get 40 miles per one gallon so that equals 10 times 1 which is 10 over 40 this equals 0 0.25 gallons because again these miles cancel out but that's not the whole question right I want to know how many gallons or sorry how many pounds of carbon dioxide are being released so all I need to do is times this is 0 0.25 times 20 this is 20 pounds of CO2 and that equals 5 pounds so by driving a car that gets better gas mileage, you save two ways. You save environmentally because you're now releasing a quarter of the amount of greenhouse gas emissions, and you're also saving at the pump. You don't have to fill up on gas as often. So it's a win-win for you. Obviously, though, if you just bought a new car, it's a waste to buy another car. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you could do is take public transportation. So let's say they decide to take the bus. Now buses aren't really that fuel efficient. Typically the larger the vehicle, the more fuel it's going to need to take in order to move that vehicle. So here's the bus. Let's say the bus also going 10 miles. But as I mentioned, buses are pretty inefficient. This gets the same gas mileage as, say, your truck or SUV. It's only getting 10 miles to the gallon. So just to recap that calculation, we're going 10 miles. This car gets 10 miles for one gallon. So that equals one gallon of gas used, which equals 20 pounds CO2. But you know that taking public transportation is better. And the reason it's better, at least better for the environment, is that it's not just you on the bus if it's a depending on the time of day it's probably not just you on the bus imagine on this bus and the same thing with carpooling too imagine on the bus you have 10 people well if those 10 people drove their own cars they would be releasing a lot of co2 they'd each be releasing say 20 pounds of co2 but they're not they're all sharing a vehicle so on a per person basis, they're actually releasing less carbon dioxide. This 20 pounds of carbon dioxide is for every single person or is for that entire bus, but there's 10 people. So the question is, is how much does each person release? It's not 20 because if each person was releasing that, that'd actually be a ton. Instead, it's 20, so that 20 pounds of CO2 divided by 10 people, which equals two pounds CO2 per person. So each person, if you look at the entire picture, each person is actually only contributing two pounds of carbon dioxide. That's better than driving a hybrid. Uh, that's better than driving your truck. You're actually releasing less on a per person basis. This is the same thing with carpooling. If you're carpooling with someone, you know, you're still releasing carbon dioxide, but half the amount. You release some and the person you're driving is also releasing some. It's still a lot better than both of you guys driving separately. So, Public transportation is better in the sense that you're releasing less per person. Another thing you could do is you could also walk or ride your bike. In this case, you are not using fossil fuels uh, and you're not releasing greenhouse gases. However, you still might be increasing a little bit of CO2 and that's because you're breathing, right? And you usually breathe a little bit heavier, especially if you're doing a uh, different activity. But we're not releasing like tens and hundreds of pounds of carbon dioxide, it's pretty small, the amount of carbon dioxide release. 
So again, for carbon dioxide specifically, using less fossil fuels, such as through transportation, can reduce the amount that we're releasing in the atmosphere.